Welcome back everybody, my name is Dustin. In the last video, we ended up finishing the ENTT meta and Soul 2 bindings. So this is just gonna be a quick video. In this video, we're gonna go over how to bind some GLM functions to Lua using Soul 2. So we're gonna make some wrapper functions or binding functions. So let's do that right now. So we'll go into our scripting folder. We haven't added anything here yet, but we'll add something now, new. And we're just gonna call, make a header file and call this, uh, let's say, GLM Lua bindings dot H and we'll include soul right away. Soul dot HPP. Cool. And then let's have a namespace. Let's say namespace scion core and we'll just call this scripting. Okay. And we're going to have a little struct and we'll just say GLM bindings. Probably don't need to make a struct here, but we're gonna do it anyway. There we go, static, void, create, GLM bindings. That takes in a soul, state, reference. And let's create that now. It should create our CPP file for us. Awesome. And we'll just take this out. All right, so that's gonna be the last thing we do. First thing we're gonna do is include glm.app. And today, all we're gonna be doing is bindings for vec2, vec3, vec4. Uh, we can do other bindings later, but those are the ones we need right now. We're also gonna do a few free functions. So let's do this right now. So let's just do glm vec2, and that's gonna be void create vec to bind and we'll say soul state lua so when it comes to multiplying dividing subtracting and adding glm has multiple ways in which we can accomplish this so we're going to have to have overloads for that so first thing let's do the multiplier overloads so multiplier overloads cool and we just go auto back to multiply multiply overloads is equal to soul overload and these would just have some lambda functions it'll be const glm vec2 reference and we'll just call this v1 and const glm vec2 reference v2 and then we'll just return v1 times v2 awesome and we'll copy this a couple more times and change this one to float because these are overloaded and it will be just value and we'll do this as well so it can be the float on either side Value. Cool. All right, that's pretty straightforward. So that's our multiply overload. And now let's do our divide. So we can basically just copy this, put that in, divider overloads, change this to divide. And all these can stay exactly the same. We just change it to divide. Same with addition. Addition, overloads, addition, and one more for subtraction. Cool. Subtract, subtract, awesome. 
So now that we have our function overloads, now we just want to create the actual user type. So create vec2 user type. And we've done this before, so it's lua.new user type. GLM vec2. And we'll just call this vec2. And in this one, we're actually going to call the constructor. So soul call constructor. And we'll have our soul constructors. Call soul constructors. And we can go GLN vec2 and send in a float. Or we can have GLM, not FLM, GLM vec2 and send in two floats for this particular vec2. And then we can send our member variables. We just want to go x construct horse. Fix that, sorry. And that is GLM vec2 x and y. Then soul also has meta functions that we can use. We can use soul meta function multiplication, meta function division, addition, etc. There's multiple. I recommend you check out the docs. But for this, we can just go soul meta function multiplication, and that's our vec2 multiply overloads. Is that what we called it? Yep. And then we can have our divide, addition, and subtraction. Divide, addition, subtraction. And then change this to division addition, addition, and subtraction. All right. All right, and that's it. That's it for VEC2. So basically, we want to do the same thing for VEC3 and VEC4. So let's just copy all this. Copy. Cool. And we'll just change this to VEC3 here. VEC3. And then let's just highlight everything here. We have that all highlighted. Good. Hit Control H, and we want to change Vec two into Vec three, and then hit Alt A. Awesome. Those are all changed for us. Let's go through and make sure that they're all changed. Vec threes, all Vec threes. Vec two. Let's change that to Vec three, 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 three. Awesome. Vec three user type. Everything was changed. We've got to change these. Back three, back three, back three. Awesome. We can do, I have to add in Z now because there's Z for back three. And we also have to change our constructors here to add another float. With the first constructor, it basically just populates the same value for all three then this constructor will populate the proper value for each of the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Awesome, that's it, VEC3, make sure it's all in there. Cool. Then there's one more for VEC4. Copy all of these. Same idea, VEC4, VEC4. Highlight everything. Control H, VEC3 now turns to VEC4, Alt A, awesome. 24 occurrences that time. Let's make sure everything changed. These all have to go to four. Cool, everything's VEC4 except for these. And this also needs a W now. All right. 
point. And then we have to add in our float here. Cool, everything is good. So now, there's one more thing I would like to do. I would like to add some helper math functions that we will be using later on. So let's just say that right here, just say some helper math functions. Not all of them are gonna be GLM, some are just gonna be from the STD. So we'll just say math free functions. And it takes in a soul state reference. Awesome. So the first one we're going to do is the distance function from GLM. The just distance function will allow us to get the distance between two points, whether it's VEC3, VEC4, VEC2. So we're going to do that with an overload. Same, same idea. So in this one we go Lua set function. And this one we're going to call distance. And then we say soul overload. And we're just gonna to wanna to have a lambda function and we're gonna take in two GLM vec2 reference A, GLM vec2 reference B. And right here we're gonna return the GLM distance of A and B. Cool, that's it for this particular one. And we're gonna do a few VEC3 and VEC4 as well. Let's get rid of that. VEC3, VEC3, VEC4, VEC4. Awesome. And there's two more functions that I know we're gonna need and one is lerp. So we go lua.set function and that is lerp. And for this we're gonna do float A, float B, and float T for the time that we want it to take, and then return STD, lerp, A, B, T. Awesome. And then one more function is gonna be the clamp function set function, because we're definitely going to be using this later on. Clamp. And it'll be another soul overload. Awesome. Just another lambda. This one will take in your float value. And it'll also take in a float min and a float max. And this will return std clamp value min max and we'll have a couple overloads for that one's going to be a double and one's going to be an int double oops double oh man double and int And, and awesome all right that's good for now but we will be adding more to this later on but that's good to get us going and here we want to go create back to find and send in lua back three back four and we want to go math free functions. Ooh. All right, now that we have that done, let's quickly go put that into our scripting system. And up here, we'll just add it in. So include scripting GLM bindings. Awesome. And we'll add them into our register Lua bindings function and we'll just do that right here. So scion core scripting GLM bindings and that just takes in Lua. Now that we have GLM bound we can actually go back and fix our transform component. Here we were having our position in this way when we could use uh, just the member function itself. So that's what we're, we're going to do and see here like 
Now we can actually use this constructor because Lua will know what glmvec2 is. So now we can actually get rid of this completely. We're gonna get rid of that. Unless you wanna keep it, you can keep it, it's up to you. And we can just send now the member variable transform component position. Same with scale, we can get rid of the whole scale. And that'll be transform component scale. Awesome. And we can actually get rid of both of these. But they're not necessary anymore because we can just access the member variable itself. Now, you can choose to keep these if you like, but we're going to get rid of them. All right, so now I'm going to build and check out our errors where we definitely will get some errors in the Lua file. Let's see what happens. And we have some other errors. What else did I miss? Redefinition. Oh, the create. <laughs> yeah, so my bad. That looked, I should have named that something different, that struct, but that'll do. Okay, this should build now for us. Awesome. Yeah, and just like I expected, we have a bunch of errors here, and it's saying in the error that it's looking for the method position, but there is no method position anymore. We got rid of that. So let's go fix that now. So in main.lua, it said around 35, or 54 or something like that. There it is. Yeah, so this doesn't exist anymore. We don't even have to do this anymore. We can just go get rid of that and go transform.position.x is equal to x pause. We don't need the set anymore, it's not needed. And we're not changing the y. And instead of set scale, we can just go dot scale is equal to vec2 scale scale. That should work. All right, let's see if that runs. Awesome, look at that, no errors, and it's doing the same thing. Now we have our VEC2 bound, so Lua knows what VEC2 is, and we can access directly the member variables. If we go up here, same with, let's check to see and ensure our constructor works, so we just go VEC2, constructor, add it in, VEC2, and run it again. Awesome, no errors, it's going good. All right guys, that's it for this video. That was a nice quick one for us. In the next video, we're gonna actually try to make the animation system and maybe we'll go over actually adding input so we can move the objects around. So the keyboard and gamepad inputs. Uh, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions and concerns, please leave comments below and I'll make sure I get back to you. All right guys, have a good day.